Hello and welcome to Rocking Horse Talk with me, David Kiss. Along with my wife Noreen, um, we've run uh, our rocking horse business since the early 80s. Um, and over that period of time we've restored and um, been in contact with many hundreds, probably thousands of rocking horses. Um, so we've got quite a good insight as to what's out there and all the different types and styles of rocking horse. So the idea I had was to do um, a brief video on a particular make of horse or a particular horse, um, let's say, uh, in each video. Um, it'll be sort of a fairly informal sort of thing. Um, I'm certainly no expert with a camera um, and hopefully it'll all come together okay. So today I was going to talk about this horse, which is made by FHAs. Um, o over a period of time, obviously, I'll be looking at different makes of horse, hopefully, and um, different styles. Um, so therefore, um, after a while, I should be able to give um, the viewers a, a bit of an insight as to all the different types of horse that there are out there. Ayers are quite a well-known company within the world of rocking horses. Um, they started in 1810 and continued trading really only up until about, just before the uh, Second War, about 1940, after which time they were taken over by um, a company called Sachs. Um, horses made after 1940, although they were labelled as um, Ayers horses, weren't, weren't actually made in their original factories down in London. The name Ayers might be familiar to a lot of you. Um, they were really quite prolific in, in what they made, not just rocking horses, they made all sorts of other items. Sporting goods was one of their big things, um, as well as parlour games. So really anything to do with um, that sort of relaxation or uh, in the early days of sport. So a whole range of things uh, were, were made by them. As with all things, um, heirs were very prolific um, in the manufacture of their rocking horses um, and over the years they produced all sorts of different um, sizes and different models um, and in quite a variety of finishes as well. Um, there are only a few catalogues about um, so it's really quite difficult to get to grips with exactly when any of these horses were made. Um, they had a terrible habit of using the same illustrations from some of their very early catalogues um, and still using, say, from about 1895 um, and then still using the same illustration back until uh, 1930. So our horse today was made in about 1925. Um, it's in pretty good original condition um, and this is what I'm trying to do with, with these um, videos is to show you examples of horses that are um, that haven't really had too much work done to them so you can get a feel of what was produced originally by the company. We measure horses today up to the tops of their heads so this horse is um, 47 inches tall so from the, from the tips of its ears to the floor 47 so as you can see compared to me it's, it's, a, it's a good size horse although you know, horses obviously came much bigger and, and much smaller but certainly with a horse of this size, it would take a child all through its childhood and could also accommodate you know, a young adult or, or whatever, or as long as you weren't too big. So someone like me, for example, can, can sit on a horse quite happily um, and, and it worked quite well. Even as, as a, for a large child, it would be you know, a good fun thing to, to be using. Um, horses were made in different qualities, A, B, C's, D's and E's. Very early horses didn't seem to have um, any particular um, description about them. I think they just came in one quality and that was a really good, um, what we would now class as an extra carved um, horse um, with very good detailing on them. Um, but later on, um, horses were denoted by perhaps a, uh, perhaps a quality A or a B. Um, the horse we've got here is a, a, an A quality horse and it is a size 6. So here we have a 1934 catalogue and it talks about um, A quality. I don't know if that's in focus for you or not. I see a size 6 
and it talks about it being 38 inches from the floor to the saddle and the length of the body is 28 inches long. Um, so we can confirm this with our horse by, um, well initially, the horse has got six stamped on the stand. Um, they didn't often have um, writing on the stand at all, certainly the, the name, Ayr's name, very rarely appeared on, on the horse. Occasionally um, on the bellies of some early horses there was a stencil on it and also on some also very early horses you might might have found a brass plaque but on say this this particular horse there's no um, nothing to say um, who's actually made it and it's only by knowing um, various things to look out for that you would know it was made by heirs. Um, typically these are heirs brackets um, with four bolts and really typical of um, the type of bracket that Ayers used. Um, this particular horse has a supplier's label on it. So this is from, I don't know if I can get that in there. It's from um, Piggott Bross in Bishopsgate. And they were the, obviously the, the retailer. I don't think Ayers actually supplied them direct to to the general public. I'm sure that they would have been sold via trade fairs or, or whatever. Um, and then stores, Harrods, Selfridges, whoever, and all the small provincial stores all around the country would have placed their orders um, and then they would have been sold on from there. And of course, you know, a small store would always be quite keen to put its own, own label on it. I'm often asked, uh, how, how, do you, how would you recognise a particular make of horse? Um, I suppose if you've been dealing with them with a, for a long time, you, you would just get to know. It's a bit like you'd know a Ford Escort if it went past you. Um, so when, a, when an Ayers rocking horse comes past me, I would know it's an Ayers. But if you're, not, if you're not sure, there are some real key features about, about the horse. Um, I, I talked about the bracket. These are certainly very, um, very common on their larger horses, although they did come in slightly different formats. So that that could possibly give you a, a, a better insight to, to dating a horse, perhaps. Um, this example is a pressed top plate. Um, other things that you would find on an heir's horse are um, the points on the end of the on the runners um, and typically the style of post. Ayers tended to use the, basically the same style of post throughout their range of horses, although um, it would have varied um, from a from a very small horse. You might not have got quite as much detail on a on a on a smaller post um, as you would on a on say a larger one.